Desiree, Alice, I would love for us to just shift the, quiz, the, the conversation quite slightly. I would like for you to answer a few quick fire questions. Now, these questions are questions that you need to answer as quickly as possible, straight to the point. All right, I'll start off with the first one. Looking at Banyana Banyana, unfortunately, we are not currently playing at the 2020 Olympic Games. And trust me, many South African football fans would have loved to see us at the tournament, of course. But if we were to have played, in which group do you think you would have liked to be drawn into? Yeah, not going to the Olympics was uh, most probably, going to the World Cup was, was probably the biggest highlight and going not going to the Olympics, the biggest disappointment. It was a game against Botswana. If we played maybe another two, three days, we would still not have scored. We had so many opportunities. But I believe you don't always get the group you want, you know. And if you look at the groups, they're all really, really very, very difficult, you know. Um, the only teams we have not played is obviously Great Britain because they only play at the Olympics. Um, Canada, we haven't played them before. Australia, we haven't played them before. So we've played all the teams, the rest of the teams that are, that are there. But I suppose if we were to be at the Olympics, it would be the group that Zambia is in because that is the group, the African group, really, or maybe the group that Chile is in um, because they played against Cameroon. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, we're not there. So we have to support Zambia, who are doing amazingly, um, you know, especially Barbara Banda. So we wish them well in the next game. Definitely. I would love for us to now talk about some of your achievements as well. Which one really stands out for you, either as a coach or possibly as a player as well? Look, I think when I when I look back on my playing career, I've got to say being nominated as one of the three best footballers in Africa um, in 2000, um, you know, um, just after we played at um, at Fort Lewis when we lost to Nigeria in the final. Um, Mercy Akiri won the award um, and Florence Omagbemi was the captain. Um, was one one of the other nominees. So I say as a as a player, most probably that. Um, as a coach, it definitely has to be the CAF Coach of the Year. Um, it says that we as a team on the right track, um, and we just need to continue with the processes, um, you know, to get better and better. So definitely, those two would stand would stand out for me um, because um, both, in other words, is, is actually team awards if you look at it. Um, the, the CAF uh, player um, nominee as well as the coach because uh, the award is for the players who were amazing, the coaches who I work with and obviously the coaches down on the ground because they play a key role. So that's why those stand out for me because it's the, it's the teamwork um, put together for us to be able to reward it, be rewarded in that way. Definitely. I would love for us to now talk about those international encounters and having the opportunity to challenge yourself against some of the best. Which team across your coaching career was the most challenging to play? Um, there's a few, actually. I would say France in 2017. You know, we come from an off-season and going straight into playing France. They were just something else, the movement of the ball, um, you know, the way they passed, etc., you know, they were just they were just something else. And I said, if we can get to 15 or 20 percent of that, you know, going forward, we'd be a, a much a much better team. Zambia in the 2018 Fcon, um, they were still in it as well as as ourselves, and we needed a draw. It was a very very difficult game. I think difficult more in the sense that we knew so much of his, of each other. Um, you know, we, we knew a lot of each other. We scored first. They scored. It was end to end stuff. Um, and it was very draining as well after having played two fantastic games. So we needed that one, um, you know, career DPR in uh, the 2019 Cyprus Cup. I remember at halftime we were 4-0 down. It was, uh, it was a game where, you know, their movement, their passing, they just pulled us apart in whichever way. They pulled us apart and um, we managed to, you know, change the system at halftime and go 4-1. And then Czech Republic, also in that same Cyprus Cup in 2019, we'd played them and we had played them in the first half and we were leading 1-0. And um, in that in that Cyprus Cup, we sort of decided to use that to play uh, as many players as we could because it was leading up to the World Cup, play as many players as we could, change players in different positions to make sure that we, you know, uh, cover all our bases before we go to the World Cup. And in that game, we had decided that you know, we were going to use Tembi off the bench. And we were leading 1-0. And we completely outplayed them. It could have been 2, it could have been 3, it could have been 4. And we brought Tembi on. And then the rain came down. 
and I'm not just talking about the rain, it was absolutely storming. And I remember the manager, Lauren, saying to me afterwards that they people in the stand started clapping hands and they said, now we're going to beat you. We could not handle the, 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 the waterlocked pitch. We could not handle how to play. And they completely outmaneuvered us, outmuscled us and, and eventually beat us 2-1. But we were in complete control of that game. So those were maybe most of the, some of the challenging games that we, that we had to face. Let me take you back to 2002, of course, that was the Kosafa Women's um, Championship as well. What was your favorite moment? Because, of course, you lifted the trophy, but I'm certain there must have been a few moments that really stood out for you. Look, um, um, you know, uh, it was our first tournament, you know, after being together for a while. And it was in Zimbabwe. Um, and uh, all the games leading up to that was really, really, um, you know, tough. But I think the most favorite moment was definitely the final in front of a very, very big crowd in Zimbabwe. And I remember we had Coach Shakes, we had Coach Fran, and we had Neil Tovey. And I remember Neil Tovey saying to us, for the first 15, 20 minutes, you don't play. You stop them from playing. And once the crowd turns against them, that's when you start playing. And in that, in that um, tournament, we had Veronica Pewa, almost probably the best left foot I've ever played with, you know. Um, we had her, we had the likes of Achilles Atoli, we had all those players, fantastic players, and Solomon's, um, you know, um, was probably one of the best strikers I've ever played with. And winning that in front of a home crowd and being at the first trophy um, South Africa's ever won, that for me stands out really big. A long time ago, though, but really big moment. Definitely the final in front of that big, big crowd who who were cheering against us most of the time. And winning the final, I think, was the biggest thing. Beautiful. I would love to ask you about some of your favorite athletes. When you look at the sporting world, besides football, let's look at other sporting codes. Who are some of your favorite athletes? Name one male and one female. I have more than one, if I can. Um, well, then name a few. Name a few. Roger Federer, um, you know, the way he... Um, the way he worked on his craft, you know, um, definitely. And the late John Shoes and Shoyo, um, you could see he was someone that took his craft really seriously, that worked on his craft. Um, I'm a huge Manchester United fan, so Brian, Robs Brian Robson, similarly to the way I like to play the game. And you obviously don't support Man United. Um, and obviously Custer Semenya. You know, the diversity um, that she's been through, the challenges that she's faced, and she always just rises up and, you know, she's, she's for me, our beacon of hope, you know. It's the resilience and the longevity of how they stayed in the game so, so long and how they stayed on top of the game and how they worked to stay on top of the game. So those, those ones have really stood out for me. Beautiful. Just the last quick fire question is, when you look at your playing days, who was your roommate? And what are some of the moments that actually stand out for you? Because I'm certain behind the scenes, some fun things also happen that we'd never get to talk about. Well, I room most of the time with Joanne Solomons. Um, she slept a lot, um, a lot. Um, and... Uh, she would say, I must only wake up if, if, if there's chicken, <laughs> like for lunchtime. She would sleep through lunchtime because we'd have another session, you know. But there was a fantastic group of players, Kabu Zita, um, Sibongeli Kumalo, Maud Kumalo, um, uh, just before um, retirement, Porsche Mudisi, you know, Veronica Pewa. We had some amazing, amazing individuals. And even this morning, Kabu Zita was sending me pictures of, of back then and saying these are memories and I said yes these are ones that we will never be able to forget you know these photos when you look at it they bring back so many good memories so um that, that for me was you know um but your end was, was someone else you know slept most of the time but when it came to the game she was on a different level as a as a, as a finisher definitely maybe she was resting and not just sleeping eh? maybe maybe we should rather call it resting <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know that's true. That's true. She said she needed to be ready. You're locked onto the Sport NBT Insider, a podcast for unrelenting coverage of women in sport. Coming up this Friday, our athletes, coaches, and administrators answer the questions that you have always wondered about. If you haven't seen through your questions yet, 
just slide into our DMs, tell us your name, where you're from, and leave your questions, and we will make sure that we ask them. Keep it locked onto Sport MVT, where we celebrate women in sport.